This is the Boombox E1 from Klim. If you have seen my reviews before, you might already know that I love Klim products. I'm not exactly sure what to think about this one. The E1 has nice features, like a top-mounted CD, clearly labeled controls, a large display that is easy to read. It has external ports, like this headphone jack, that also serves as a line out. There's a three and a half millimeter input jack that is also used as an FM antenna, a U-drive slot, your power port, and an on-off switch. You can even use this as a Bluetooth speaker. It has a left and right mounted three watt full range speaker and a five watt subwoofer. The Boombox E1 has all the elements of an interesting system, but I do kind of object to them calling it a boombox. For one thing, there's no handle, and I, I think that's I think that's necessary. But even beyond that, if it's called a boombox, it should boom, and it doesn't boom. Yeah, it has a subwoofer, but it's a 5-watt subwoofer. Come on. But even beyond that, if you have a subwoofer, you expect it to be able to handle deep bass, and this just doesn't. Once it gets above 50% volume or so, you start to get severe distortion. I wouldn't call this a boombox, and I don't think it's useful as a Bluetooth speaker. The only time I could see myself actually using these speakers is if I was listening to it at a low volume in a small space, such as uh, an office cubicle. But if you wanted to bypass the speakers altogether and use it with headphones, or the line out going to some powered speakers, that I could envision. In either one of those scenarios, I would want these top mounted buttons to be located on the front instead. But they do give you this remote control and anything you can do from up here, you can do from here. In fact, there is one feature that you can do from the remote control that you cannot do from the unit itself, and that's the repeat feature. Repeat one track, repeat all track, or my favorite, Shuffle Play. Shuffle Play works with either the CD or the U drive. Speaking of the U drive, I tested this with a 128 gigabyte U drive. It worked fine, but it did take several minutes to index all those tracks the first time. And as long as we're back here, if you are using this for a headphone driver, just be aware that the headphone is on the back of the unit. My preference would be to have the headphone jack on the front of the unit, but I guess I can kind of understand since it shares functionality with the line out. I should point out that they do include this three and a half millimeter patch cord, which is important even if you never attach an auxiliary input to this thing, just because this is required if you intend to use the FM radio. This is used as an antenna. It doesn't have to be the cable they include, but you have to put something in there. I do have some concerns that there is no speaker grill protecting the subwoofer. In theory, you're not moving this around. It's sitting on these feet and the, there's, there's only a small space between the bottom of the unit and the top of whatever this is sitting on. So it, it probably won't be a problem, but it just makes me a little bit nervous whenever I see an exposed speaker. When you turn off the E1, it remembers three things the last radio station that you were listening to, the track and position of the U drive, and the track and position of the CD drive. The FM radio works well as long as you are using the antenna as required, but it doesn't have any concept of presets, so it will remember the last radio station you were listening to, and that's it. If you are familiar with Klim CD players, you might assume that there is a TF card slot on here, and but there isn't. And so if you are used to being able to record off the radio or record tracks from the CD to the TF card, you can't do that with this player. I should probably mention that this remote control is infrared and not radio frequency. And the biggest reason why that is important is if you are using this as a headphone driver and you want to use the remote control, you have to make sure that this light hits this receiver, which is actually kind of difficult the closer you are. I appreciate the fact that they have a line out to use with external powered speakers, but I would really prefer that it had the option for a coaxial a toss link, a spit if a digital output to feed 
a larger stereo system. I think this could be a nice addition, a companion piece to something like that. One of the features that makes quite a bit of difference with the E1 is the equalizer button, and it's available on the remote control as well. Your options are flat, which is no modification, uh, bass, bass boost, pop, jazz, and POC, POC. Yeah, you read that right, it's POC. Now, I, I think it was supposed to be rock, but they mistyped. And then of course we've got classical. As you can see, the Klim Boombox E1 is kind of a mixed bag. In my own life, I only see it being useful as a headphone driver. I will note that if you do intend to use it for headphones, I would say that it is loud enough but it will not deafen you by any stretch of the imagination. So th this is a desktop companion, as far as I can tell. How would I rate the Klim Boombox E1? If you intend to use this with the onboard speakers, then honestly, I wouldn't even buy it. If you want to use this to drive some headphones or some powered speakers, I would give it a, a four out of five star rating just because I would want the digital output on the back. But the remote control, I mean, it, it does a lot of nice stuff, um, but it's not perfect. Four to five, thanks for stopping by.